Man, I don't know if I can remember the last time I was so excited for you guys to be here for a visit. This is going to be a great one. Now, it's also one that could end up being a glorious mess. I'm not exactly sure how it's going to work out yet because there's a whole lot of versatility to talk about today. And that's going to be our word of the day, man. Versatility. Why? Well, by now you know that I'm going to look at these guys. It is the Iron Factory Turret Semantical. And I'm not usually the kind of dude who is in for third-party upgrade kits. Now and again, but not often, even though many of them are indeed fantastic. But I've wanted these guys for a long time, and in essence, this is a continuation of my birthday haul. This was a gift to me from me. Stick around, because we're going to cover everything to do with these guys, as well as really sort of provide an updated look at the Titan-class Metroplex in the latest Got By True review. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Gotbot. It's fantastic to have you here. Like I said, I am absolutely stoked to take a look at these guys. Please, like, comment, share, and as always, man, subscribe, stick around, have fun with us, spend some time on the channel, see what it is that catches your interest. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, Transformers Collectors, NL, and me everywhere. And this is my first foray into... Any figures from Iron Factory. Now, I love what they do with their Legends class line. I, a lot of times, at least it looks like they're hitting it out of the ballpark. And I've wanted this set for a few years. A few years. Because, though I love Metroplex, there were a few things about him that I was unhappy with. He didn't have his second huge red blaster thing, which I have also since rectified. And he was missing six gun which we have a third party representation of here in the form of turrets and slammer this guy who we have here as a third party iteration known as manacle and in this case slammer actually turns into a robot which is something that he couldn't do before he was just a little tank and you would figure hey how can two little legends figures be that exciting it's because there's so much you can do with them. We're going to look at these guys in full, all of their plethora of accessories, and how they interact with the huge Metroplex as well in all of his modes. Which, of course, will kind of affect his score because now we have things to add to him. Anyway, enough of me babbling on and gushing about these guys. Let's head over to the table and take a closer look at, well, everything. This is a perfect example of a figure, or a set in this case, where I almost really don't know where to begin. It's a perfect example of getting so much from something so small. It's absolutely astonishing. So, we're going to kind of try and start from the simplest things and work our way up to the most complicated, which is probably going to be Metroplex himself. And you've seen Metroplex here on the channel a few times by now. I've done comparisons of him with Fort Max and Trypticon. I looked at him in full way, way back in episode 24. That was a, that was a daunting task back then. And I think I made certain mistakes and errors when I did that review. So. Now, in light of this, we'll do a bit of a, like an update to that. Something that's probably sort of long overdue. But we are going to primarily be taking a look at these guys, and we're going to give this set a grade. And by now, you can probably tell that I'm excited about it. Hopefully, hopefully that translates into good marks for the guy. We'll, you know, we'll see. Before I go on, I want to give a couple of quick shout-outs here to Popo, to Bruce Robinson, Amanda Martin, uh, Isaiah Cook with a Chance, Astro Tanker, 26 Manuel, Darius Hill, Rex 2017, Jason Adams, Marv Churchill, and Leader Strag. So, Thanks to you, thanks to everybody that gives me 
you know, some of your time, some of your attention. I do not take it lightly. It means the absolute world to me. We're going to start off like we always do and take a quick look at the box first. And of course, here we have the box for these guys. Now, now when this showed up, it was packaged in styrofoam and taped all the way around. And it was actually quite secure. And inside of the styrofoam, it was in another kind of plastic... Uh, sleeve, I suppose. It, it had a little bit of a like a pungent odor when I first took it out, like it had just come from the factory, just from the assembly line. That has since that dissipated and does not last. We have a picture on the front of turrets and manacle over here. Of course, manacle in his tank mode, as he kind of properly should be. This, of course, is a third-party representation of. Six Gun and Slammer, they are a couple of the uh, guardians of Metroplex City. Nothing really here on the side other than IFEXO2. Not much on this side, though we do have we do have a, a picture here with uh, some of the uh, accessories. And then we come to the back. And I love the way that they did this. Now, I don't think that these were quite finished when this picture was taken because we're missing paint apps, most notably on uh, this guy over here. But we do see how certain accessories can go incorporated and we get to kind of in the background see the alt modes. I think that's great. We even have uh, like kind of Metroplex over here. And of course there are other upgrade kits you can get for Metroplex. There's a, a large version of Six Gun. There's the head upgrade. There are more poseable fists. Uh, there are feet upgrades most recently. And all of them, arguably, can not only enhance the figure, but to varying degrees might even be necessary to get the level of perfection that you want. I would like to have the feet upgrade. I don't know if it's practical for me where I um, have him displayed. I, I, I feel like the kind of extra foot bulk it would add might make him a little bit too big. I don't know. We'll see if I ever get it. I also mentioned that I have the second large red blaster cannon thing for Metroplex. And we'll take a look at that later when we see how these guys incorporate. But for the box, it's a box and it's pretty good, I guess. You may notice that it's actually for a couple of Legends class figures, it's a rather large box. That's really because of the wealth of accessories and I'm going to go through them now. Before I go through the accessories, I just wanted to point out that this is the instruction sheet. It's on both sides, but you get an idea here of what is highlighted um, and kind of the schematic drawing. It's, it's pretty good, actually, for instructions. They're not hard to follow at all. And accessory number one is this nicely molded little, I guess, missile pod. It's Got three red paint apps on the front. You can see I'm holding it by its five millimeter peg. It doesn't have any more pegs and ports besides that or anything else added. These, like I said, are little, I guess, missile pods. There are four of these. Count along with me now to see how many accessories we have. It looks great. It will, you know, we'll see how it incorporates with everything soon. And then we have four of these nicely molded blasters. The only paint app is the silver on top, um, but there's four of these. They look cool. And again, I'm holding on to it by the peg down bottom. There's also a five millimeter port on top of this one, which adds versatility of what it can plug into and what can plug into it. So far we're at eight for anybody keeping score. And then we have two of these blasters. Really, these are the primary ones that are intended to go in the shoulders of turrets. And I'm holding again onto a five millimeter peg. There's a five millimeter peg on either side and there's a port in the back. This is an extremely versatile piece. It's sculpted nicely, no paint, but I don't really think it needs it. We were at eight accessories. This now makes 10 since there are two of these. Oh, we do have a silver paint app up top. Look at that. Next up are two of these nicely molded shield pieces. There are silver paint apps there. I guess you could have it that way or this way. You know, it's your call. 
On the back we have both a peg and a port. So these again are quite versatile. And this brings our total accessories count right now up to 12. And finally, we have these, I guess they're two blasters. There's a five millimeter peg down here, one up top. There's a port on the side. There's a port on the other side. This is really the kind of centerpiece for putting the accessories together. All of these, because of how they fit together, they're almost like building blocks. You can be so creative with how they go together. There are, of course, two of these. So if I'm not mistaken, I think we were at 12. This makes 14 accessories that come with this set. And so now we have like a whole mess of parts here. I'm like, what do you do with them? Here's the beauty, man. Anything you want. I mean, they're, I said it before, I think, that they're kind of like building blocks. Like with the pegs and the ports, they can fit together any number of ways. So I don't know, we could start off with what? If I can find it. We can start off with like one of these little pieces and we could place like one of these in either side like that and we could take another one of those pieces and like put it in right there and we could take one of these shield pieces and put it down underneath I don't know one of these and let's stick on no I won't stick on the end of that have it like come off the side over there and I don't know why you would want to do what I'm doing here, but like you, the point is you can. <clears throat> we could take one of these and put it there and take one of these and I don't know, do I even have another port free anywhere? I don't know if I got another port free anywhere, but like you can, you can see a billion ways to put this together. Now there's a proper way to do it. And I will show that now since, you know, since we do have a proper way to do this and I'll take all of this apart first and I'm going to take this piece out of it and I'm going to take this piece out of it because by rights they're intended to go with turrets all of this goes technically on Manacle who is Carver and Ports himself we'll see that in a little bit but officially what you're supposed to do is take one of these pieces and put one of these on either side and take one of these shield pieces and put it say right there and one of these I don't know missile embankment pieces I suppose put it there and there and we have a little peg and this is really what you're supposed to end up with like it's like a shield buckler thing it's it's cool I guess maybe I should have these, I don't know, I'm going to say facing forward. It's cool, you have two of these, but like it looks fantastic. I absolutely love it. And there's virtually nothing here that I can complain about with it. So, since I said all these go on medical, like I said, we'll look at that in just a little bit, but let's spend a little bit of time first with turrets. Now, this guy, of course, is a third-party representation of the character of Six Gun, and I added the Autobot symbol myself. It obviously was not there uh, beforehand, and he's supposed to be made up of, as the name suggests, Six Guns. And a lot of people have complained and said, he's not. He's, at best, made up of four. Well, you can have him be made up of six, technically. The two blasters that I took out by rights belong here in ports on the side. He has ports on his shoulders, ports on his ankles. He has a peg back here. He even, for some weird reason, has a port behind here that you can't really use for anything. So, by rights, what you, you know, according to the instructions, you should put that one there and put that one there. And this is what you should have. That's fine. Anybody who knows the character knows that these should be facing forward. 
So we will face them forward. Now what about the other two? Well, I use two of these pieces and I just peg it up underneath and I just do the same here. And now the guy is in fact made up of six blasters. Cool, perfect. So what about his paint apps? Well, you know, maybe the red should be a little bit darker. There's some extra silver here. There's a little bit of yellow. His visor has a beautiful blue on it. There's a nice contrast between some kind of like maroon red up here and down here, which probably the main body should have been done in. Overall, his arms should also be red, but you know, if you know the character, you know who this is. I'm going to say it's a strong nine. It's definitely indicative of the character it's meant to represent and does it quite well. Now, there's a, a bigger version of this guy and you know what? Like, that's cool. That is cool if you want a bigger version of this guy. I like this size. I, I feel like that it matches for Metroplex, which of course is what he's intended to go with. What about the articulation? Well, the head can go left and right. It can go up and down a little bit. The arms, they can go all the way around on ball joints. They can go out about that far. Maybe if you get the blasters out of the way, maybe a little bit further. We have an elbow to 90 degrees. Because it's on a ball joint, it can go across his body, so that's technically our false bicep swivel. I guess, I guess technically it's an elbow swivel. Getting the arms out of the way. The guy has no waist because of how he transforms. The leg can go all the way out. It can go all the way back. We have super duper deep knee and dedicated thigh swivel, and he can do the full splits. Plus, when he stands, Really, even with the added weight, the guy stands like a champion. Nine! He's still a nine! Now we need to get into the transformation for the guy. And because he turns into a couple of blasters, you might say, well, he doesn't have a mode that can move around. Well, he could be held by other figures. I mean, deluxe class figures or Voyager class figures or whatever. And at least one part of him could be carried in another way, actually both parts of him could be carried in other ways. And I'll show that after we get him converted. So how do we do the conversion for this guy? Well, we're gonna begin by taking the blasters off of his shoulders because it's just the easiest thing to do. We'll get those out of the way. And then the guy really begins by being pulled in two. We have a little notch right here that goes slipped over a couple of little teeth right here and like a lot of people have been concerned and wondered like is he going to fall apart no he's not he's actually quite solid when he's together at least my version is it's not too tight it's not too loose it is tolerance just absolutely perfect so we're going to take him apart again we're going to leave his pants there we're going to take the top of his body off and deal with his lower half first. So what do we do with this lower half? It's actually quite easy. We'll begin by bringing out the handle piece, which is down underneath, and it comes out right there. Probably a little bit unfortunate placement for the handle, but hey, it is what it is. The legs then fold up over, and there's a little, I guess, piece right here that goes into a, like a notch right there. So you fold them at the knees and bend those up over, put those into the notches. And if you haven't done so already, make sure that his legs are together. And this is what you have. Now, those shoulder pieces, we're going to incorporate those next. We take this piece and put it on over. It really, there's a peg like inside of his kneecap, I suppose you would say. And you take this piece and you put it on over. There's two of the blasters that make him up. And then I would put one there. And then the other side I would put that one. And really, this is now four of the blasters out of six that make this guy up. And again, because he has that peg, you might say, hey, he's just a blaster. How does this guy get carried around? Well, I'm going to show you how this half can be carried around, no problem. Although it arguably makes him extraordinarily back heavy, you can take the little red blaster off of 
scamper and put this guy on there. No reason why you can't do it, and he can just be carried around that way, I suppose. Maybe you could even angle it down. Might be too... I mean, you could angle it down if you're so inclined, but he can kind of carry the lower half of six gun, no problem. So what about the upper half? Well, the upper half of the guy's body also turns into the other two blasters that would make up the six in total. And it's so simple. We fold this down. Now, there's a port in his back, like I said. I don't know what it's there for. We bring his shoulders in, and we have a tab here and a little slot, a tab here and a little slot. His arms go together. In like that. Oh. And boom, there you have him put together. These tabs could hold a little more securely. They're not perfect, but it helps as long as you make sure that you have this shoulder hinge pushed all the way in. And that's really it. You could put a, like a couple of other pieces up there, but what do you do with this piece now? Well, you could also put this on scamper or you could take the kind of I guess turret section off of manacle and you could very easily just do that with it put it on the back of manacle perfect so here we have two halves that make up a tremendous and complete small figure the conversion is easy everything really tabs together nicely those arms you might finagle them a little bit these white pieces up here if you don't have the shoulders in all the way, once you have the shoulders in all the way, they hold nicely. We have one, two, three, four, five, six blasters to make up six gun, I dig it, conversion, nine. Everything to do with this guy overall makes him a package of nine. Great start to the first half of this set. Well, what about the second half? What about Manacle, who we've kind of hinted to now a couple of times? And if it's even possible, Manacle, or Slammer if you will, might be the more versatile of the two. Unbelievable. So, first things first, the paint apps, it, it's fantastic in his tank mode. In this mode we have some nice blue, we have some nice yellow, some kind of silver highlights, the whole side over here is all painted. Back here is all painted white and silver. There's silver on the tank turret. I put an Autobot symbol there myself. The guy has uh, a nice blue visor. Honestly, 10, we'll say 10 for his paint apps. There's, I don't even know if there's anything more I could ask for the paint apps for the guy. It's fantastic. Now, what about all of those other accessories? Well, a couple of things to note. The guy's covered in ports. We have a port on his arm, on his ankle, on his arm, on his ankle. Then when you come over here, you can actually take the, the turret section and fold that up if you want, but he has a port here and a port here. If you don't want that there, you can take it off. And he has another port in right there. This can come off and by right, it can go on his arm. I believe like that as like a shield this can come off and we still have a port back here I showed earlier how you could fit part of turrets in there you could take this and I don't know you could put it in his hand as a little blaster if you don't want it there you could take it and put it on the side and fold this piece up and just have those on either side of the guy. If you want to leave it on his back, you certainly can do that, which is what I'm going to do now. I'll put that there. I'll put this piece back on over it and fold this down. And now you can incorporate all of those other little pieces. You can take these and, for example, put them down on his lower legs. Say right there and right there. Like that. You can take the, uh, what I'm calling bucklers, and put them, say, on his arms. There. It's a, it's a tight tolerance, but you can put that one in there. You can take this one and you can put it in over here.
And now the guy is completely armed up. And the funny part is, with his kind of stubby little body, like, I feel like that this matches him like he should be, you know, a rather, like, bulky, burly-looking defender of Metroplex. What about his articulation, especially with all of this junk on him? How does it affect his articulation? Shockingly, he's still pretty fantastic. He's fine as a tank, no problem. In fact, the whole turret section can rotate around. Of course, the cannon piece, that can move up and down. We'll see that in a bit. In this mode, the head can like kind of wiggle left and right. It can rotate, it can look up, it can look down. It's hard to do with this panel in behind it. The arms, they can go out to the side, respectively far, not bad. They can rotate all the way around. On the back here, there's a little panel that comes out and it can swing out quite far. That gives you kind of added shoulder movement because now that panel's not in the way. We have an elbow to 90 degrees. We have a, a, a bicep swivel, but because of how far his chest comes out, like it doesn't really get across his body very well, but he does have a bicep swivel, or again, a, like a false one because of the ball joint at the elbow. The legs, they can go well forward, they can go well back. We have a super duper deep knee again. We have a dedicated thigh swivel, and this guy has a waist. Uh, there's nothing more I could want on a Legends class figure. I mean, you're not gonna get ankle tilt on a Legends class figure, though, though, he does have toe tilt. And again, even with all this bulk on him, he stands tremendously well. 10, 10, there's nothing more you could want from that. Okay, well what about his conversion to tank mode? Well, we're gonna begin by really taking all of this bulk and junk off of him because though we'll put it back on, it's just easier to do it if that's not there. We'll take this off and this off. And now we're left with his base mode. And I feel like a lot of what is done here is, like, it's ingenious for such a small little guy, I do believe. So where do we begin? We pick up his chest and we bring that up over. Now, what we're essentially going to do is bring the um, arms in and... straighten them up and these little tank tread sections will tab in underneath here. We'll see that in a bit. We turn his waist around. Now you might have to get the turret section out of the way a bit. But we turn his waist around. Straighten the turret section back up. We take his toes and we fold them down. Then we take the leg section and we fold it up like this and take this leg section and fold it up and then the legs peg together. You know that you have it oriented correctly because of this rear tread section here. And naturally that should be underneath. Then you begin to bring the shoulder in and straighten the arm on the ball joint up with it. If you had that little piece up behind the shoulder, kind of push that back in now too. Bring those shoulder pieces in and then straighten up the arm pieces to the outside. So what you're looking to do is line up the entire tread along the bottom of the guy. When you have this done, we have a little tab here that goes into a little slot, and a little tab here that goes into a little slot. We bring those in. We straighten the arms up on the side. We make sure that the little tabs here go in kind of behind the leg section. Like it's sort of a lot moving there at once. Tab that up, tab that up where the shoulder should be. Get that little section in and that little section in. Make sure your legs stay tabbed together. Straighten out your turret section and boom, in the end, there you have Slammer or Manacle, if you will, 
in his tank mode. Now in this mode, like I said, the turret can go all the way around, it can angle up. The one bummer is that he doesn't really have any wheels, so he doesn't really roll, he just more kind of pushes along the, the ground, I suppose. What about all of his stuff? Well, we can put all of that back on now. So we come, say, let's do this one first. We come, say, to this side, and using this port here, maybe we could... Put that in, do the same over here, and say put that in, like that, and in terms of the other two kind of rocket pieces, you could put them up on top, up on the turret, say, or you could just stick them kind of here in the sides and now you have a really kind of henched up tank thing. Uh, it, you know, it's up to you what you want to do. But the lack of wheels does hurt the guy. Don't get me wrong. If anything, I think that this guy is probably more versatile than his partner. There's that word of the day again. But he's not perfect because he doesn't have any actual tires. He doesn't even have little rolly pieces that I can see. I don't think he does anyway. And I don't think so. The conversion is interesting. A lot of things with the arms need to move at the same time as you swing in the shoulder, straighten up, up the arms, and then tab everything in. All that sort of moves fluidly at once, but it, it's tolerance really well. The lack of tires, and really because all of these pieces sort of push him down a little bit, like, not push him down, push him up a little bit, like he's not quite resting completely solidly on the ground. Makes me think that this is not absolutely perfect. It's still pretty strong, and you don't have to put all of this junk on him. I'm gonna say a nine. So, the first half of this set, we had an overall score of nine. For this half of this set, we have an overall score of about a 9.5. So, on the whole, these two right now are a 9.25. It's a strong set of two fantastic legend scale figures. But that's not all these guys do. As you may or may not recall, I mentioned that Turrets is a version of Six Gun, and of course, Manacle is a version of Slammer. And the two of them, along with Scamper, were the Really, the three kind of city defenders of the huge Titan class, Metroplex. And it always sort of bothered me that Scamper was the only one that we actually got, though arguably he was the most important of the three. You can see how they scale here with Scamper quite nicely, and that's why I love this set, because they scale with Scamper, who scales with Metroplex. And if you're anything like me, you don't necessarily intend to keep all of the junk that goes with Manacle on him. I'm not, though I will leave the blasters that go on six gun, gun with him, or turrets, if you will. Because, well, they're supposed to be there. In essence, Slammer isn't even supposed to be a robot. He's just supposed to be a little drone tank. The fact that he can transform into a robot at all is kind of a testament to creativity and a nice, I'm not gonna say revisioning, but a nice uh, kind of iteration of that character that actually does make him very Transformer-esque. Well, if I don't intend to keep all of that junk on Manacle, then what am I gonna do with it, man? Simple, I'm going to start incorporating all of this onto the one and only gargantuan Titan class Metroplex himself. Now, this was just the regular retail release that I was actually really lucky to find. Well, actually, I didn't even find it. Starscream Girlfriend found this guy for me for 90 bucks, Canadian. It, it was 
faith. That was faith for me to have this guy was faith. And then, of course, you notice here he has not one but two blasters. The blaster in his hand has the missile. The other one on his shoulder does not. The one on his shoulder I found while thrifting for two dollars. And as soon as I saw it in the little plastic baggie, I was like, no, you have to be kidding me, man. You have got to be joking me. Uh, so I, I naturally picked that up. So now he does have two of those blasters. I think that's amazing. I said that I was going to kind of update this guy a bit. Now I added a couple of paint apps really just to the blaster so that they look more like they have windows, it's blue that I added. We'll see that when he's in his city mode. Um, you know, in this mode, everybody sort of knows this articulation by now, with the head that can go left and right, it can't look up and down. The guy does have, for anybody not in the know, he does have a clicky waist. He, taking this out of his hand, he does have shoulders that rotate all the way around on ratchets, clicky bicep, we have deep elbow bend, we have a wrist swivel, the hand can fold in, the finger can fold in, all of the fingers are individually articulated at the base knuckle, but that's it. There are better third party hands out there for the guy, there's no doubt about it. We have outward lateral movement all the way to the sides. We have legs that can go well forward and well back. We have a swivel. I guess it's a thigh swivel, but it's really just at the knee. The knees bend to 90 degrees. Unfortunately, the knees also bend out like this. That's that's not great. That That doesn't look good. Nothing at the feet, but we've you know, we've gotten upgrades over the years that have improved those things. They've made his hips stronger. They've given him really shoes that go on over his feet to make them better. So, in terms of his paint apps, I would have to say that there's no mistaking it's Metroplex. Now, granted, he spent some time at the gym to get these massive guns and this broad chest and still kind of has this itty-bitty abdomen. Maybe he should have spent more time on abs day at the gym, but it's no mistaking it's Metroplex. Some of it is paint, a couple of things are custom touches, a lot of it is stickers that have actually held up quite well over time, shockingly. Not like the foil ones we've been getting on the uh, kind of Power of the Primes line. I'm going to say that his look, you know, being Metroplex, I don't even know what I scored before. I'm going to say it's a 9. It, you're not mistaking that it's Metroplex. In terms of his articulation, well, you just saw everything there. There is room for improvement. I'm going to say it's about an 8. Though I probably said 10 and 10 before because I was so excited to have him. But a 9 for his look, an 8 for the articulation because there is room for a little bit of improvement for sure. But it's still not bad. Like, it really isn't. Some people say that their knee joints are really loose on the dude and that he falls forward and all this stuff. Mine aren't that loose. You know, he will kind of fall forward, uh, I guess, if I make him too precarious. But generally, he's fine. He's fine. And he makes a, a cool-looking city, especially now. And he makes a fine... Rolling aircraft carrier battle platform thing. His transformation is easy, shockingly, to all those modes. I'm going to say that's still a 10. Overall, Metroplex, as he is, is he's about he's about a 9. He's great. He's not perfect, but he is great. And I, if you get your chance to get your hands on the guy, definitely do it, man, because... I never ever get tired of looking at this guy on the shelf, ever. And so what about Turret's Manacle? Because we're not really here for Metroplex, are we? No, not quite. We're going to kind of try now to incorporate everything and see where it all sort of fits and flows. We'll start with the easiest parts first, which would be those 
four little, what I call missile pods. I don't know, maybe they're lights. I don't know. And basically, here in robot mode, we have four little slots down here on his feet, and these will just fit in there. By the way, for anyone watching this not in the know, the guy is, the guy is two feet tall. You see me here talking about a lot of Legends class figures, you know. Here's Scamper with him, so you can see the size difference. This guy's gargantuan. And we put another one so there in that foot, and we take the last one and put right there. Then we have the two, say, shields. And we take the whole, the whole thing, and it goes on his forearm there. So you can put the two of these like on his forearms there. And I mean, it does not affect really his range of motion, not to anything discernible. Next, we take the whole kind of turret section of the tank. We open this up, and on his inner arm blaster thing. There's a peg, we put that in there. And we should, if we've done this correctly, maybe we can pull that in. Yeah, there you go. We should be able to close that back up so it's held in there until we go to say city mode. Scamper by right should be in car mode. And we throw him in that chest cavity section. If you weren't sure where Scamper goes. Then we have our little tank dude and we Really what we're doing is opening up the kneecap and there's a little peg that I forgot to take out here. It's, it's challenging to get up under the front piece here of the tank. There's a little like peg inside there and it's hard to get it out if you don't have something to kind of wedge it out with. There is a little lip there that you're supposed to be able to push on, but I, can't, I can never get it to quite work. So you pull that peg out. Then you put this guy in his tank mode. So we bring the arms in again to the side. And we put the legs together like that. We bring all that down and lock it together. And fantastic. Now, using that peg, which can be a little bit precarious, there's a hole inside the kneecap and that peg should go slotted into that hole if it will do it. It does not always like to do it. It does like to kind of push up into the body a little bit. It's fine once you get it. It's just you might have to like finagle things a little bit to get it to fit in there. And there. I think I've got it. And we bring the kneecap back up over. So now his kneecap is filled in here. Then we have really the only guy left. And that means we need to use the other kneecap. Again, we use that peg that we had as a handle earlier in his pants section. And we use this rounded peg hole right here in the kneecap again. And hopefully, same sort of problem. like. It's a bit of a nuisance to get it to slot in there. But once you have it, now he has like kneecap blasters. And we can close that kneecap back up. His upper body, that blaster, it goes incorporated kind of over his shoulder a little bit. And using this peg, we stick it in behind the shoulder. There's a, a little section kind of by the helicopter pad. That's where we put that. Now, I didn't have it done, but I guess I'll do it now. These pieces here, I totally forgot. You have to take the other blaster and put it in on the side there. Now these can go incorporated right there. And over on this side. And we can incorporate it right there. 
and this is how everything goes in with Metroplex in robot mode. It, like it's just enough to give him a little bit of added interest. You know, we have the little bit of added interest with this guy up here. We have, you know, these, sh I guess, arm buckler blasters. I mean, there's technically four more blasters now on his arms. We have a hidden blaster in here. His kneecaps are now both filled in. One of the kneecaps now has two blasters in it, but like it doesn't affect his articulation like this knee. Like it still bends fine. Same with the other knee. Uh, this arm over here, it still rotates no problem, even having the upper body of six gun on the back. This is fantastic, but it's not the only mode, of course, that these things would incorporate with. We also have his like aircraft carrier thingy mode. So I'm going to do the conversion. I'm going to attempt right now to just leave everything on him and we will like adjust where things are positioned as need be. Actually, you know what? No, because I know there's certain things that come out and move. So we'll take the kneecap out. This guy does not stay in there. And we take this kneecap out, because this guy does not stay in there. To convert this guy to that mode, we push his legs in and push his legs in. We put them together. I'm just going to put those like that. We will take his feet and bend down and take his leg here and bend down and then we can sit Metroplex down and kind of tab these legs together. Now I'm just going to adjust a couple of things slightly here, including the camera, and then we'll sort of pick it up because I'm not focusing too much on this. Okay, and since <clears throat> last we met, I have pulled out his ramp here. I've incorporated the, his second blaster over here. I've lifted up this armature, and I pushed his head forward and lifted up this piece. And I guess this can angle up a bit too. Then we take this arm and we straighten it back and we take this arm and we straighten it back we take his hands and put them down under and the whole kind of buckler piece that was on his forearm we remove that now and it incorporates up there this time we move this down and that incorporates up there this time we extend his shoulder and extend his shoulder piece and now on the pieces that you bring out you have Again, a port in the black section here and a port in the black section. So you can take this guy, apparently, there, put that out of the way, and put him there. Extend that one all of the way, and put this piece. It will do it for me. In right there, you can open this up and take the turret section out again and place it back on the little slammer tank. And really, you can place slammer down right there. I don't know. He's he's working he's working with the crane thing. And last but not least, just take scamper and. Stand him up right there. And this is the incorporation of everything in this mode. 
Um, I'll kind of do a, a pan view here now so you can see it a bit easier. I certainly hope that this is showing it easier, but you get the idea. Adds just a little bit more to Metroplex. Okay, so now we'll see how all of this incorporates in his city mode. Whew. Now, if you're an old man like me, you're starting to get pretty tired. And we have one more mode to go. Now, here's the interesting part. Nowhere in the instructions does it show at all how to incorporate any of this into his city mode. So this is going to be kind of interesting. And hopefully this time when I convert him to city mode, I don't mess it up like I did before when I've done the review. So we're going to, for now, we're going to take everything that's extra off of the dude. And I think it's probably safe to say at this point that for most folks, this is how they know their Metroplex to look. By the way, I didn't have this kind of double cannon section flipped out in this mode. You could seat someone up right there. There's a seat. Um, again, doesn't really matter right now. But basically, I have everything kind of off. Pretty much off. I'm going to put him now in his city mode. And uh, we'll, we'll kind of... We'll kind of see how that goes. So, the very first thing to do, and the easiest thing to do, and I'll put that up for now, is to turn the guy around. Of course, that fell off, naturally. That's all right, we'll take it off for now. Haha, <laughs> you don't win over me, Metroplex. Now that we have that done, we can take this arm thing, and we can put that back, back down in there. And really what we need to do is stand them up and flip the legs over. That's Essentially, that's all we're really doing here at this point. <clears throat> so we take the guy, we stand him up so that he sits down now the opposite way from what he was. Okay. Whew. All right. This is, this is exciting. This is, this is exciting. What do I want to do next? Let's deal with maybe this arm next. And we're going to put it down. And now this whole section folds out around the back. And then this whole section opens up. I'm going to leave these out because, hey, why not? You flip these pieces up, which can be a pain to do. Pick that one up and that one up. There you go. We'll bring those up like that. This piece never likes to stay up on mine. I don't know why, but it's it's never it's never been a, a fan of staying up. We take this arm and now we bring it all the way forward. And is this the way I turn it? Yeah, this is the way I turn it. We turn this arm like this and we put this hand down and under. And we fold this out and push this forward. I like to, because I like to have as many spires as possible, I like to take this shoulder gun over here and angle it up. And it has some blue accents on it, just like this one has some blue accents on it just to kind of add to the cityscape. Then we can untab the leg sections and slide those out again. We open up that leg section. We fold down the bottom of his foot and we angle his foot up and angle this kneecap, say, forward. We do the same over here. We're going to open out his leg, angle down the bottom of his foot, angle this foot section up and the whole leg section kind of forward. Here with these pieces that we had in this foot, I don't know, let's, let's turn them around. For now. 
do that. Now, when I done this conversion before, what I missed was bringing down this piece for the missile pods, which I do not have missed now. I have it down. I had it down in his other mode. And I don't think I brought the ramp all the way down, though, again, I certainly should have done so. And you tend to open out one more section like that. In terms of his blasters, well, one of them was on his shoulder. We're just going to put that one back where it was. Except now we keep it up straight, and you'll notice I have blue on it. It's supposed to be like windows. I don't know if that's even a building, but hey, we'll say it is. Why not? And the other blaster, I've never quite figured out exactly where it goes, so I just sort of finagle it until it fits. And there's a little peg hole kind of under the corner over right there underneath and I use the handle and place it up there. It's a lot easier to place that when you do have this flat piece with these two little gun pieces out. So that's part of the reason why I leave that out and it tends to hold pretty well. And this is Metroplex in his city mode with the second cannon and like I think it looks great. Now you can also take this piece off and place it like underneath right here and it helps again with the cityscape so that's sort of up to you now now to incorporate kind of everything and everybody else well very first thing we can do is put that piece back in there why not why not make that like a a double tank cannon thing you know, hey, why not? It seems like a good idea to me. So now where do we stick everything else? Well, considering that Slammer is supposed to be one of the towers, I don't know, let's take Slammer and... Let's place him right there as another tower. Why not? It seems like, seems like a good plan to me, man. We could take the upper part of Six Gun's body and place it Say back right there, it gives another little flat area and a couple of like rear facing blasters, I guess. We could take these two pieces maybe and angle that forward. Angle that forward. Place those two like that, why not? Uh, just to fill in this kind of section right here. I mean, it seems kind of weird to have that H there. I don't know, let's, let's take the lower part of six gun, maybe. Why not? We can throw that there. Okay, so I took the buckler things apart and I don't know, let's, let's find places to put all of this. Let's say, maybe we could put a, a shield piece in here. Yeah, sure, why not? If we put one there, maybe we could put one over on this one. There you go. Four, and, and by the way, nothing I'm doing here now is official at all. It's all just, hey, where can I find places to put this stuff? And I'm left with but two pieces remaining. So where will we stick those two pieces? Well, let's say we got a, we got a peg that looks like there. Yeah, sure, one can stick like that, and the other can go over... I assume it can go over right here. The other can stick like that. And there you go, now we have everything incorporated in city mode. And I think it looks, I, I think it looks glorious. I mean, it's not enormous, but <clears throat> does it really need to be? Just for fun. Here we have Scamper standing up in the city that he loves so much. I don't know, I absolutely dig this. I, 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 let's let's kind of go freehand here for a few moments and sort of take a closer look here. And here we have the down front. You can see where all of those added cannons are. 
those two red pieces there where that little roadway is. I never understood why they stuck up the way that they do, but hey, now we have a reason for it. We can see all of the additional kind of pieces. I don't know, I, I dig it. I absolutely dig it. And hey, just for fun, in case you wanted a little more diversified look to your kind of cityscape background, you could always remove this kind of shoulder cannon piece from here. You can leave Manacle up there as a, a different type of building. And you can place that one. There's a, a port right back here and a, I guess a peg on this extender gray, light gray piece. You can put that in there like that. And there you go. I mean, like I said, absolutely versatile. I put it in all of these modes and this is just one configuration, well, two configurations technically, that you can do. You can kind of mix and play and choose where all of these pieces go. It adds, for a little add-on kit, it adds so much play value without really affecting the overall aesthetic of Metroplex. So, I had said that the whole set was a 9.25. Overall, I said that Metroplex is like a 9.5. Honestly, I think overall the whole thing is about a 9 to a 9.5. It all comes together so tremendously well. I can't quite give it a, a, a 10, though I would love to, because I totally realize that the hands on Metroplex could be better. The feet, we all know that we have those shoes now that we can get, so there is still a bit of room for improvement. But whether I get those or whether I don't, and I don't know if I ever will. I was a long time getting this set, so who knows. I do feel like that this is an absolute and complete Metroplex. And that makes me smile. And here we are again, man. Whew. That was, that was a lot. But I love how these guys worked out. I think that if you have a Metroplex, you really kind of owe it to yourself to have these dudes. They scale correctly. They look great. They function fantastic. You can do so much with them. There's ports all over the place. There are pegs on all of the accessories, and you can put them together in so many configurations. It fits all over Metroplex, but doesn't really change the look of Metroplex. There are other third-party upgrades, admittedly. There's a larger version of this guy, for example. There's the more recent feet upgrade. And it gives him kind of boots, which I think is fantastic. I don't think that it would really let him fit on my shelf. I think that his stance would now be a little bit too wide. But that's also a great upgrade, upgrade kit. Blech. All of that being said, I do feel like having these guys and that second blaster now really makes my Metroplex, at least to me, feel complete, feel the way he should have been in the very beginning. Is this worth grabbing? Yeah, I mean, don't overpay for it, but yeah, definitely, they're fun. They're, again, word of the day, versatile, and they really kind of fit the part stupendously well. Anyway, that's my thoughts on these guys. I think that they were a slam dunk from Iron Factory. Let me know what you think about them. Do you think that they turned out well or not? Do you think that they're an upgrade kit worth having or should you choose something else? You know, as always, I love to hear what you guys think about these guys. I thank you for dropping by, giving me some of your extremely valuable time, and I very much look forward to the next time that you and I get together and have another visit inside the videos.